at this point, we'll want to identify the gonad and the gonad condition, being the sex and maturity of this northern pike. Once again, to make the incision through the pike's tough skin, I suggest going through the vent. Once again, keeping your knife pointed upwards. Go right through the ventral girdle of the fish, proceeding towards the pectoral fins and the pectoral girdle. At this point, exposes the pike's internal organs. The long, pale thing is the pike's liver. This is the intestines. Here is the pike's stomach. What we are interested in is the gonads of the fish. As with all fish, they are located underneath all the internal organs and parallel to the air bladder. This is a mature female, being this fish would have spawned in the spring. The gonad is fairly pink in color with many veins coming down. It is also quite loose and uh, what we term flaccid. It is uh, fairly, uh, how would I explain? It's, uh, it's quite soft and uh, translucent. And if you look very closely, you can almost see residual or leftover eggs that are left in the ovaries from the spawn. Gonads are located on both sides of the fish. You can see that there is the other side of the gonads. If this was a male pike, the gonads would be a pale white color, opaque to look at, meaning you cannot see through. As I put the knife under, you, under the gonad, you can still observe the blade of my knife, meaning you can see through the, the ovaries of the fish. A male mature pike will have white to pale white gonads with a large vein or blood vessel running down the center of the, the vein. That is the easiest way to distinguish the male and female northern pike. The next step is removal of aging structures. On the pike, we remove the clythrum. This is also illustrated fairly well in your manual. However, I will give a, a demonstration here as it can be difficult to remove the clythrum. The clythrum is the most accurate aging structure for the northern pike and, in addition, it is the most cost effective as you can almost see the lines on the clythrum yourself to age the fish as will be demonstrated later in this video. The removal of the clythrum. Lift the gill plate to expose the clythrum. The clythrum is located right here. It is a hard, bony structure. You can feel it. What you want to do is insert two fingers into the clythrum to remove it. I generally take my top two fingers into the clythrum and once inserted in, you can push through. This time one finger is sufficient. In addition, you can also use your knife to insert into the clythrum. You need to break right through and expose a hole in that clythrum. You can then use that to pry the clythrum bone out. Proceed to the top of the clythrum bone, exposing the top of it. You then use your thumb and peel back the, ski the skin and the flesh while pulling away with the clythrum. At this point, it is very important to continue all the way down to the bottom of the clythrum to the tip and remove the clythrum. You need both sides of the clythrum. So I will flip the fish at this stage and remove the other side. This time I will demonstrate with the knife as it can be difficult, particularly on larger species. Insert the tip of the knife in, creating a hole for yourself. You then can take your finger and you can see it is through. Work to the top, 
pull the clythrum away from the flesh. One of the more difficult spots is where the pectoral fin ray connects to this bone. It can be tricky at this point. Use your thumb to pull the flesh away while alternatively pulling the clythrum in the opposite direction. One side may be tougher than the other side. Once again, pull all the way down to the tip. If lucky, you will be um, then able to back the clythrum out, producing the clythrum. At this point, the clythrum can be very dirty and have flesh, which will continue to rot. As I indicated in the manual, you can put these in the plastic whirl packs, which are located here.